Hello everyone, it's Toby and welcome to my channel. Today we're doing a nice, fun, relaxing sketch of a little old rural scene. Now this is a small street with all those lovely cobbles and that fun little lamp hanging over the top. And we're going to look at how we can use just really simple ink watercolours to capture that kind of detail but without making it fussy, without making it too much of a challenge. How can we get those textures, but still relax and enjoy ourselves? Today, well, all I'm using, just a couple of things. Got my two little Da Vinci travel brushes, which I'm sort of trialing out at the moment to see how much fun they are. Got a little review video about these, which I popped up a few days ago. You can find that link below. So if you want to check out more about these, do check out that video. I'm going to be using my Diamond 580 um, Extra Fine Fountain Pen, that's by Twisby. And in that I have Sketch Ink Lottie, which is a nice black ink, totally waterproof, which lets me play with my watercolours on top. I've got my normal set of watercolours, they're all listed, linked in the description below, so check that out. Finally, the paper is Hanmuller paper, it's um, on the block, a little bit bigger than A4, but I'm just going to be sketching in the middle of it. Um, and it's 100% cotton, which gives us loads of room to play with, with our colours, with our water. And like that, we're ready to go. So I'm going to start with my pen. I'm just going to find the key shapes of this scene. Now in this scene, I'm going to start in the background. People ask all the time, where should you start? And actually, there isn't a right answer to that. It's about where you're sort of comfortable. Now for me, if I get this house in the back feeling right, I can get everything else going away from it. We can follow this roof up to get the other roof. We can find the corner. When we get the corner of this, we can come down and find the bottom of the other of the other house. And if I don't get it too big, it will be the right scale set for everything else. So by just focusing a little bit of effort on one area, well, hopefully what I'm thinking will happen is it will just make everything else a little bit easier. Coming down to the bottom, we can't actually see the corner, so I'm not going to pretend I can see it. I'm going to come straight in to these lovely little sort of plant shapes. I can come out a little bit and find this kind of doorway here. Bring that out and across. And look, we've set the scene, we've set the sort of scale. Now, immediately you can see it's not perfect. So, in my waffling, if you, I'll give you a, a second to spot it, to spot my... Uh, my purposeful mistake. It wasn't on purpose. These things just happen. Look, this floor isn't tall enough. So I've made the, either the floor's not big enough or I've made the door too big. Um, so the proportions aren't perfect. For me, that's okay. I'm doing a sketch. I'm going straight in with my pen. I noticed it, but I can't go back. You know, it's permanent ink. I made a point of telling you about this permanent ink. So I can't go back. So I'm going to have to just live with it not being perfect and capture the scene in other ways. So in other ways, being like the atmosphere, the, the feel, the color, the simple shapes, rather than a perfect in proportion sketch. There's always a few people who don't like that. And that's fine. That's just, you know, a different perspective. Some people think that art has to be a perfect representation. And cool, if that's your version of art, then great. For me, art, or at least my version of my art, is all about having fun, exploring the watercolors, and just creating a kind of relaxed feel about the world. So with that, I'm not worrying too much about accuracy, but I'm getting the, the ideas. So look along here, we've got these kind of little square bricks and these little lines. So I get those ideas in without worrying too much about getting the exact right shape. Going back, we can just add in this little roof here, and then we can move into this really big fluffy bush coming all the way forward. And look, we can now find it. This is the corner I was talking about. From that corner, we can start tracking out and getting the bottom of this wall, which then comes neatly into the top of this building. And what we're doing is we're in our minds, we're following this line up until we grab the top of this building. Of course, it's got a little bit of fun going on with the guttering here, so we go out get that and now look because we set this first we get the flow of this whole scene feeling about right just with some simple little bits of line work then we can find just a little bit more about the shape of the underside here get the shape of this sort of guttering 
And there you go. So we've basically got our scene set now, haven't we? So time to move on to some of these bits which were rather fun. And this is like this sign hanging over. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Again, that's all right. We're, we're artists. This is why I like non-realistic art. It's not that it's totally made up. It's that I can exaggerate bits. I can say I really like this sign. So I'm going to make a feature of it. Now, if I was stuck in realism, I wouldn't be able to make a feature of this sign. I'd have to stick with the size it actually is. And I can just put the little bits of writing on there. I can't read what this says, so I'm just going to suggest writing. We've got this fun sign, which we can make a feature of later with our colours as well. Coming down behind it, we've got this guttering, which I've referred to far too many times. Comes out here, and they'll just bring it up again. And there we go. What else is missing? Of course, we've got this window with its little overhanging bit. So we'll get that overhang. We'll bring the window down. Get the approximate shape first and the shapes inside. And there we go, just like that. We've got basically got the window, haven't we? Underneath, a little bit of, sort of trailing off greenery. And there we go. So we've got almost everything. But there's a key bit, we talked about these sort of cobbles, didn't we? So with the cobbles, it's important to remember the cobbles also impact the things around them. So this here, the, the bottom of this building, the bottom of this building, we need to already be thinking about the cobbles. The same here, this wall is already thinking about the cobbles when I drew it. What we'll do is we'll just also get this wall's like rustic feeling in there as well. And I noticed, as I said last thing, that I hadn't actually finished off Sort of suggesting this bush up here. Just going to do a few sort of scribbles. Apologies if this is too loose for people, but this is what I'm feeling today. Just doing really loose scribbles for my um, sort of certain parts of my scenes. Coming out here, we've got this little wooden structure behind. And then now we really are on to the last bit, which is the cobbles. So, like I was saying, the cobbles, you need to think about their texture as you're drawing other aspects. It's no good having drawn a perfectly flat line here than expecting the viewer to believe that this whole street is cobbled. Having done these kind of cobbled edges, these cobbled textures, we can now just start thinking about the cobbles themselves. And what I'm going to suggest is you don't draw every one. So we're just going to scatter around a few and think about the perspective. As we go back, you're going to get smaller and smaller. In fact, in the back, what can you really see? You can just see a few little black lines. Coming forwards, there's other things there's like this manhole cover. So let's just get that in. That's a different texture. And then coming forward, we've got more and more of these stones. And as they come close, you can really see their shape. And you can really see some of them have got some deep shadows around them. Don't forget also, there will be a sort of lines of perspective. So here we've got clear lines of perspective for this building. All of these stones will be in perspective as well. You'll have like a grid like this. See, the feel of your stones needs to flow along that kind of perspective as well. Instead of kind of being rigid and coming towards us, they, I hope you get the idea they're flowing out, flowing towards us, and then flowing this way, just to get that feel of the world spreading out in front of us. And just like that, I think we can call this, this little step done. Now the ink works a little bit messy, but that's because we haven't sort of found our structure yet. And we're going to do that towards the end when we've added our watercolours. So first I'm going to use this size 2 mop brush and I'm going to apply a light wash of colour to not all of the sketch but a lot of the sketch. I'm going to start in this lovely sky and it's got a very soft appearance hasn't it? Soft clouds, lots of white um, on the page but also some nice little bits of blue. So I'm splashing in some uh, cobalt blue and cobalt turquoise then you see if I just add more and more water it gets that very soft and flowing appearance and I don't want I think any more sky than that because there's so much going on down below. To start with I always like to leave some negative space you see so to start with I'm actually going to leave this greenery, greenery blank. We may change that decision but we'll see we'll see in a bit what happens. Instead I'm going to focus on this kind of back building the way we started and it's got like this peachy kind of colour to it. So I'm having a little mix of some warmer tones, some quinacridones, alongside a tiny bit of red. And then hopefully that, with lots of yellow, will get us towards a reasonable effort at this colour. 
And I say reasonable because for me the joy is in the painting, not in the, the hours spent mixing. So I get something which feels right, which fits my sort of feel of the scene, rather than, I know it's not perfect, um, and I'm going to make it varied as well. So I've just added in here a little bit more red. That little bit of extra variation just makes this wash intrinsically interesting. And this is something I really enjoy doing, making my washes intrinsically interesting. It's something in my courses on sketchloose.co.uk I go into a lot of detail about how you can apply sort of just immediate interest just by varying your washes a little bit. Really useful technique, I think, to get to, get to grips with. On the top, just a gentle application of some grey, which I mixed up with a, a little bit of lunar earth for texture, a little bit of indigo, a little bit of perylene violet, a little bit more indigo, and again, we can vary that wash. I'm going to use that same grey straight away, maybe a bit more indigo because it's a bit closer, it's a bit punchier. I'm going to just get this shadow underneath. And then we're onto this really fun colour, aren't we? So we've got this very sort of, tur not turquoise, <laughs> violety purple. So I'm going to actually start with some perylene violet and this is going to be a bit of trial and error. I think perylene violet plus a tiny bit of um, probably a tiny bit of my red and a tiny bit of yellow again and hopefully, oh no, what I've made is a bit of mud. So that's why we mix up on the side here so that we can see when we go wrong and I don't apply that mud to my uh, to my scene. So we can easily wipe that clean, get that out again and let's try again. So that, that one didn't work. So what happens if we just leave it as perylene violet? That's quite a murky color. And just a touch of red. I want to just liven it up. I think that, that's much better. That's what I'm feeling from this scene. A kind of, it's not a bright color by any means, but it's definitely not a um, overly murky color. I'm gonna vary that again with just changing up the, the ratios. But I wanna go quickly enough that my colors will not have dried on the page. We've got this greenery here again. I'm just gonna very gently, well not gently, but loosely go around it. And then in here, we've got this nice yellow color. So let's just find a bit more of that peach. So I could mix up the exact yellow we've got here and here, but actually it makes more sense to keep things similar across the image so that it doesn't confuse things and confuse the viewer when they're looking, trying to understand you know, what all these colors. So instead, again, this is, what I think your choice as an artist is to make the art make sense. So here I'm gonna make the this color and this color a bit more similar than it actually is. And there we go. Now, something I want to do is just connect things a bit more. So we're gonna just drag these colors down a little bit to give a general feeling of tone on these cobbles. And that's also gonna allow us to do a bit of wet on wet painting. So using this same big brush, we're gonna mix a few different things. So I'm going to get my indigo out. That's like a sort of deep blue. I'm going to pop a little bit of quinacrine and sienna in there and that will neutralize it. And so now we've got this kind of oh, in my brush. <laughs> All going wrong today. Now we've got this blue, this gray, this browny gray, a little bit of sort of perlin violet in there. Now look in this palette here. We've got all sorts of colors to choose from. And now what we can do, or we have to do, is just pick one up paint a few areas with it, just gently. That wet on wet approach will ensure things just move around. And then we'll get a little bit of something different, a bit more of the blue this time. And again, look, that wet on wet is just making sure these things stay soft, move around. A bit more of the purpley gray this time. And now we're just starting to simulate all those different tones and colors going on in this area with a nice bit of soft wet on wet painting. Get a bit more brown in a couple of places. That's not really a color which is there, except maybe suggestions of it in this wall. So we'll use it a bit more in that wall, a bit more over here. But a few touches can't hurt. And a bit more purple as well. I like the, the slightly uh, abstract feel of that purple as a tonal color, and it kind of balances this thing out, this bit rather nicely. Come back in here, just do a little bit of shaping of some shadows same up here, whilst our paint's still a little bit wet, we can just start to suggest some of these shadows. And anything else, maybe one last touch will be just to get this sort of woodwork in. There's always something else you notice, so it's good to have a quick look around, because I realize I've left this building out in the background. And like that, 
we're going to touch a little bit more light into the foreground like that though I'm going to let it dry a few minutes just to dry out and then we'll come back in with some bolder colors and see how that starts to shape things even more so for that whole step I was using this mop it's got a big belly of water but not and a, and a point but not the finest point and because of all the water it, it's hard to be specific and hard to be dark and bold with our colors now I'm going to put that one away get out this sword liner which will be just enable us to be more specific, apply more texture, be a bit darker. It doesn't enable you to have that same loose wash of colours though, which is why I didn't start with it. Now what I'm going to do first is just get some of these colours we were using before, so a little mix of our, our yellow, red and quinacridone, and then use that kind of peachy colour to come back in here and find just a few more of our kind of darker textures. That's not quite peachy enough for me, so a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow, and hopefully we'll be somewhere closer. I think that's more like it. A little bit more warmth coming through. And using this, we can just start suggesting a bit of light. The light comes from the contrast. It comes from the darkness of these colours. And just leaving a little bit of the pre-wash behind means that we get that feeling. Same coming up here, we can suggest, you know, all of these bricks on the right are quite light, so we can suggest that by leaving them blank. We just get a little bit more life into there. Up the top, in this roof, the roof is still a bit wet, so this isn't going to go as dark, but that's fine. That's the nature of sort of quick sketching is things. You've got to sort of work with things. Now, I like doing silly swirls, but that one didn't work quite for me, so I just come in with my brush, soften it out, and there we go problem solved or problem averted perhaps in the background we've got this house i almost forgot the end last time remember and we'll just do it early on now so i can't forget it if i've already done it this chappy is our next little mission so a little bit of that red a little bit of that perlin and hopefully we're on the right sort of tone to start just popping in a much richer feel and here i'm going to be careful to just come around for example areas of this um uh, ducting coming down of course it's called now the pipe that's coming down um the guttering i suppose isn't it that's what i called it last time and we just keep painting around keeping it nice and loose keeping some of that light of that previous wash coming free but also just not being too uh, restrictive in how we're adding color i like adding a few dots keeping things varied as i said a little bit more perlin down here to promote the idea of like deep shadows. Same under here. And then moving in, just grabbing some more of these rosy, peachy yellows to re-emphasize just a little bit of these yellows up here, but again, leaving plenty of light. And at the very top, what have we got? We've got these dark areas, the, the shadow underneath. Now, Coming forward is our next challenge. So now we're going to be a bit more specific. We're going to take slightly darker colours than before, but the same idea, having them all to choose from in the front. I'm going to take that kind of more browny colour to get our feel of this wall in the background. A little bit of that same browny colour for this wall back here. And then in the foreground, we'll do a few splashes to start. Just that's going to loosen things up as we touch colours in prevent us being too specific and I'm just going to start finding a few of these little brick marks changing from the brown to the purple to the blue and then back again just finding all these different areas just suggesting these bricks and some of it's like painting what we've done some of it is not some of it is painting new areas some of it is loosely glazing over the bits we've already done you can find I think a few more splashes now that we've done that darker ones to fill the foreground a little bit of red splashing down here to give that connected feel maybe a little bit of yellowy splashing up there to give that connected feel and anything else for this layer well actually i think there's one more thing that would be good to do or at least one more thing and that's get this feeling of a little reflection a little sort of grayish reflection so i'm just going to mix my i've got a little bit of red here so i'm mixing my cobalt blue into that red to get something more neutral and now these windows can have a slightly neutralized blue which suggests the sky reflecting down and hopefully that just adds an extra quite important layer actually which is just explaining a bit more about about what's going on in our scene 
just using their little brush to create different kind of textures, different movements. Last but not least, let's get this little uh, door. It's actually a rather large door, isn't it? This big door, we'll get that some color as well. And there we go. Keep looking around. I want this roof a bit darker. And with that roof getting darker, I'll get this shadow darker. It's all very relative. Everything in watercolors is about, in art in general, is about relativity. So if one bit's relatively dark, then another bit's going to need to be lighter or darker, or you know, you have to balance these things out. This sign, for now, I'm not sure what to do with it. I actually wonder if this is where we have a look and we go, you know what? We kept all the green as negative space, but maybe to make this sign stand out, we want to change that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry first, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at these little details we want to add, the sign, the hanging lantern, and we'll see how we can restructure our image and then finalize these details to make it really pop. So we're back, I've got my fountain pen out, and we're gonna start just by restructuring. Restructuring for me just means coming around and responding to what our watercolors have done and just redefining key shapes. That might be refining the ones we already thought we'd found, but we lost them under the watercolors. Or it might be that the watercolors have done something interesting and we sort of go with it and we find what they've done, make it our own. It's also a good time to start adding in little details so we can now see that there's enough color that actually adding a little bit of extra ink work into these windows to give them more shape, well, it's gonna work. And I think that does work rather nicely. Similarly here, we can outline our bricks here, these light bricks. If we just outline them a bit more, they'll feel lighter because we've got that contrast of light and dark coming in. Down here, we can outline these shapes a little more, these doors, all these little bits. What we don't want to do is overdo it. So we don't want to go over absolutely everything and create too much havoc on the page, but just enough. For example, this back building, just touching in a little bit, adding a dark window, but leaving it distant, leaving it with a light sort of edge. Now these trees and things, we can now redefine and bring their edges all the way up to these loose sort of watercolors we were applying. And that's what I mean by responding. So look, we find these little white gaps and now our trees, our bushes, can fill those gaps. Before they were just sort of loosely defined based on, you know, well, what we felt the first time around, but now, We've got all these little areas of watercolour and suddenly we can give them a real life, real shape just by taking into account what our watercolours have done and making our watercolours look far more purposeful than they really were. That's what I love about this sketching style is really being able to take credit for stuff you haven't done, for work that, you know, the watercolours are doing and for understanding our watercolours, that's what lets us do that. It's a real skill as well as making it look like you've got more skill than you do have. Which possibly, maybe that should be the uh, the strap line to my art career. Or maybe you disagree, maybe it doesn't look like I have more skill than I do. You know, everything's subjective, so I'll, I'll take your opinion and I'll put it into your advisement. <laughs> anyway, enough of me being, uh, being weird and cheeky. What we're gonna do, bring this uh, pipe down Again, finding these points of contrast, this black area of the pipe, bringing it up along this light area. Now we can really redefine this sign. Perhaps the perspective on it isn't perfect the first time round, but we can just improve it a little bit here. I don't want it in perfect perspective. I want it to feel a bit wonky and kooky. I want it to feel a bit mad and crazy. It's like a sort of a key part of this, this scene can do some little hatching. That's another way to make it stand out. We just hatch across and get a little bit of this feeling of shadow. And maybe with that having been done, I just need to refine the suggestion of this writing. And again, if you have nice handwriting, I always say this, I have horrible handwriting, so I try not to write on stuff. But if you have nice handwriting, feel free just to literally to write on it instead of just making it up. Now, one of the key things we mentioned at the beginning is this lovely light. And I've left it to the end so that we can really give it a good position and make it feel a, a real key part of the scene. So I'm gonna pop it into this gap. I think there's a nice gap for it. And we're just gonna start with simple shapes again, being nice and loose. 
there's also a real sort of area of contrast here. So we can start having got our simple top shapes in, we can get that sort of contrasty edge in and then bring the rest of that lamp in and then bring the rest of it down here. And there's also a bit of darkness back. So we do a tiny bit of hatching. It's not as dark, so we don't black it in there. Just give it a little bit of hatching to get that sense of some darkness in the background. And then of course, we need to connect it. So we find this sort of iron mongery and we just pop that in onto the edge of the roof. And there we go. So hopefully that's worked quite nicely. We've got this sort of chaotic jumble of iron and metal. Um, I think it's working all right, actually. It's always quite hard to get these things sketched in. And there's no right way for me to do it, I think. In, in my learning, in my experience, I've tried lots of different ways. And I like just experimenting and seeing how we can add them in, how we can make them feel flexible and fluid. It's crossed over the top of this pipe a little bit. Ah, for me, that's okay. So I'm gonna leave it. it. In the photo, it's quite chaotic. It's quite a jumble of things. We also got a little wire coming through. So I can e even add that in. Um, I'm gonna even add, let's just give another suggestion, just the, the sort of chaotic jumble of man-made things. In all of that, what I was thinking as well is I was having a look at some of the greenery. And I thought, you know, instead of adding green, which will add another different thing there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a technique I rather like doing for simple areas. I'm going to hatch it. So this one, I'm going to hatch vertically, and then this closer bush, I'll hatch horizontally. Now that will hopefully show that they're both the same thing, but because they're hatched in different directions, it will also pull them apart. Similarly, we can do the same idea here responding to our colours to get the new edge of our greenery, capturing this sort of white light area, this kind of negative space. And then we can apply another direction of hatching. So this time we'll do it diagonally. And that diagonal, hopefully, will just get that idea that all of this is the same, but different. It's the same thing in a different place, in a different plane. Coming back, we'll get the sort of windows nicely uh, just inked in a bit bolder bold lines bring them to the forward to the forward to the front gosh cannot talk today so sorry about my uh, my repeated wafflings little shapes of bricks down here get that bottom edge in again that just needs to be nice and bold to bring it forward we've got these other trees in the background so we can give them that same kind of hatched approach not trees but like little planters and things Got this little area that can be vertical hatching what else is left to do just a few tiny touches around some of these bricks again we can respond to our watercolors to find the edges that we've created just add a few new ones in leave some of the old ones undone untouched no, don't do too much that's the biggest thing to now is just don't do too much like that i'm just going to put my initials on i'm going to hide my signature perhaps in this bush. That's quite a fun place to hide it. And I am going to come back with a few tiny little touches around. So number one, I like I like my lights to have a feature. And in this instance, that feature is going to be a little golden glow. Because why not? Then it just fits with this gold. It fits with this gold. So give it a little bit of yellow, a little bit of quinacridone. Then touch in with some more water. Let things move, splodge give it that glow coming out. You can even just spread out the glow with a few little lines. And even if you want a touch of red or something different in there, gives that that kind of warm, cold feel. Um, there we go. And then what else can we do? Maybe just bring out some boldness in these yellows here. A few splashes to balance, just trying to balance out this yellow in a couple of other places. Maybe some of these windows we can add just a a second layer of shadow too that often works rather nicely just give the windows more presence more of a 3d feel same up here little extra sort of doubling down of our shadows same here same up there this this whole pipe this whole drain that's what it is a drain i haven't used that word all 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 this sketch and uh finally it's come to me i'm, I'm talking about a drain if we give it a shadow that will just give it a bit more presence 
you'll make it sort of exist on that wall rather than being just something which doesn't quite make sense. You can see in the reference there is a bit of a shadow. And similarly, we can get shadows on things like these bits of shrubbery, which we've flattened, but that doesn't mean they're not 3D and real as well. Maybe continue that shadow here and here. And before, before long, you'll find yourself, at least I'll find myself overdoing things. So we always need to just take those last little looks around and eventually just say that we are done. Everything we need to do has been done. Everything else will be a mistake. So we stop there. And I think just with a couple more touches in some of these little bricks, that is the stage we're at. We're at the finished stage. So there you go. A bit of a different scene, a more zoomed in scene, focused around this interesting focal area, pulling apart the greenery, making it something different. If you enjoy these kind of techniques, do join me on sketchfulloose.co.uk. I've got really in-depth courses looking at exactly how to do all of this and more. Um, but more importantly, join me here, enjoy yourself sketching, creating, don't be bound to any rules except the rule that if you enjoy it, do even more of it. Um, and with that, happy sketching. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.